Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and I got some great news for the Rust stations amongst us. Yes, you Rust lovers, we've got not one, but two Rust game development stories this week. Uh, first, we're going to talk about the all new Firox engine and then we have a bevy of other news coming later on. <laughs> Uh, anyways, Firox, it's not actually all that new. It's actually a rebranding of the Rage 3D game edge. I covered Rage, I think, mid-late, uh, mid-early last year. Uh, and again, it is a Rust-powered game engine. It's one of two options. This and Bevy are the two biggies out there. There are, of course, other projects, but I think these are the two that have the most momentum. And they decided to rebrand Rage 3D, which I'm going to call Rage 3D for the rest of this, to Firox. And they have this new logo, which is, it's a logo. Uh, as you can see over here from the GitHub page, this is a 100% Rust project other than a little bit of shader programming. So if you are into Rust, you are going to like this. In fact, it is MIT licensed. And uh, we'll get into some of the reasons behind the rebranding, what we think of it, and so on. But first, a little bit of a hands-on. This here is the Rusty editor. Um, you're not going to get a really nice look of it because unfortunately it does not have a great, uh, what's the word, high DPI support. It does not look overwhelmingly great, but I'm going to come in here and I'll create a new scene like so. So you can create, you can use this to basically instantiate and create things in the world. Uh, you'll see here from the create tab that there are a number of options since you probably can't read that. You've got things like pivots, meshes, sound. Uh, and the variety of meshes, uh, built-in cubes, spheres, and so on. Uh, you can create lights, spots, points, directional lights, physics, uh, 2D physics, 2D. Hopefully they move the 2D stuff into its own category uh, so it doesn't get messy. So you have to put 3D in a 3D category, 2D in a 2D category. And that 2D, by the way, is a bit of a spoiler of what is coming soon. Uh, this is why part of the rebrand was they've added 2D functionality. We're going to get into that. There was also a new release, 0.24. We'll get to the details of that in a second. And you got Sprites, Particle Systems, Train, and Decal or decals, depending on how you say that one. Um, you've got FBX support. It's support for a number of different popular file formats. Uh, and what we could do, basically, to instantiate something, literal drag and drop. Uh, you've got 3D placement in the world, widgets and such for handling things. You have physics functionality you can add in. So I could add, uh, uh, you know, for example, up here, physics. I could add in a rigid body. Um, I would obviously want to pair that rigid body. So you can see the rigid body properties available over here. And then that rigid body would control the entities that are attached to it, such as so. So this FBX is uh, pretty straightforward to, to bring them in. You can bring in pretty complicated FBX. This is coming from the examples they got. I'll bring in this mutant. Uh, again, this is the raw FBX file. Literally just drag it in like so. And uh, the orientation is bad on that guy. Again, by the way, you can navigate in the editor uh, using the WASD keys, like so. Uh, but as you can see, you can bring in um, 3D models, FBX models, no problems at all. Pretty easy to work with. You got the functionality over here. You got a hierarchical support there. You got support for animations, etc. And that there is the Rust editor. Really simple to grab this guy and get it going, by the way. Uh, if you've got uh, the Rust toolkits already installed and you've got Cargo installed, which is pretty simple to check, just basically go to command line, type the words Cargo dash V, like so. You should have a reasonably current version, such as the, um, let's see, that's October 21st version in my case. Um, and then you just kind of want to come in, go into the directory you want to install things, clone this repository right here. So basically just do a git clone like that, which I've already done. Go into that folder, so Firox, like so. And then you use cargo. So I just want to run the editor. I do cargo install rusty editor which by the way, I've already done the build, so this should be pretty much instant. And then to go ahead and run the editor now, just do Rusty Editor and it will run and you can start playing around with the editor, etc. Again, MIT license, we'll look at some of the features of it right now. Again, there was a 0.24 release available. Uh, the website hasn't changed, so hopefully they get Firox or Firox Engine soon because this is gonna cause some confusion. If you keep using the rg3d.rs, which by the way is the URL uh, website, uh, that's going to definitely be confusing. In terms of some of the features, uh, high, vo high quality volumetric lights, number of different platforms, basically the major desktops plus web, no mobile, uh, no console at this point in time. Again, this is pretty early on. I would not recommend anyone use this in a production environment unless you're ready to get your hands quite dirty. Uh, it's pretty much true of almost everything in the Rust ecosystem at this point in time. Uh, defer deferred shading, built in save and load so you can change the entire state of the engine in one call, which is nice if you want to basically, um, you know, save game progress, pretty easy there. Full scene graph, uh, we saw the hierarchical on the side. 
high quality binaural sounds. Uh, it's got physics built in, multi-camera rendering, multiple LODs, um, skybox support, and so on and so forth. Uh, there is a full editor in there. Um, the other really nice thing with it, there are the examples that we saw in action earlier on. Um, there is a bit of a conversation about why they renamed Rage 3D. Uh, again, there's not really much in there. The primary creator of it just basically does not like the current name. There's a bit of talk about uh, other things here, such as uh, with 2D in there, the Arch 3D becomes a little bit weird, the names. Here are a number of the suggestions they were looking at. I don't actually like any of them, to be honest. Um, uh, his, uh, I like these ones, in all honesty, better than these, uh, but I'm, I'm, yeah. You know, at least it didn't start with UN because we, we don't need another un-engine right now. But uh, I, you know what? I, I generally hesitate to rename anything, especially, again, if you've got a community established behind it. Rage 3D is a little bit on the generic side, and there are a couple unfortunate aspects to that. First off, 3D is in the title, so once you start adding 2D support, which, again, this is one of the new features of 0.24, is they added 2D support. So that makes the name a little bit outdated, so I get why you'd want to change it at that point in time. On top of that, uh, Rockstar Advanced Game Engine, the game engine behind... Um, you know, GTA 6, uh, well, it's called Rage. So that is a little bit confusing as well. Plus there is a uh, first person shooter series called Rage out there as well. Plus it's a little um, generic. Plus it's kind of got a little bit of that, you know, 1990s triple X extreme, yeah, kind of vibe to it as well. Um, so yeah, I, I get the point behind the rebrand, but it's always challenging. You know, remember Stride renamed itself? Uh, and I haven't heard a whole lot about Stride lately. Just saying. Also, if you're going to create your own project, you're creating your own game engine, and it's a 2D game engine or it's a 3D game engine, but at some point in time, you might be switching your mind, don't put 2D or 3D in the name. I've seen it over and over and over again where people ultimately go down a different road and then their name becomes a little silly. So if you're starting your own project, top tip, don't put the 2D or 3D in it if it's not necessary. All right, so again, one of the big features of the 0.24 release, which was released, I think this was on Friday, um, 2D support is definitely one of the big ones. You have 2D support in the editor too, by the way. Uh, you also have the lighting system, standard lighting system works, uh, but will be improved in the future, which is definitely nice. So you've got support for lights in there. You also have have 2D box-based physics in there as well. Uh, the book has been updated. The, the book is kind of excellent. We'll get to that in just a second. Um, so definitely some nice improvements there. We've got some uh, performance improvements, performance by 2.5x times, and performance of the UI up to cave a thousand times improvements. So those are definitely some nice numbers. Those are also good illustrations of why this shouldn't be used in production. If you're capable of getting a thousand times performance improvements out of something, it is definitely still under development. Uh, we got improvements to resource management, sound system, a uh, full list of the changes are here. But again, probably the big one is the 2D support there and definitely some huge improvement optimizations through there. Um, yeah, that is it. Again, we have a full book. So if you want to get started with uh, Firox Engine, it's still called the RG3D. And that's going to be confusing for new people. Uh, hopefully they get the book renamed. Hopefully they get the URL updated at some point soon. Uh, but you've got really good documentation. This is one of those areas, again, a lot of it's whips. So you're going to have everything that's marked as a whip isn't in place. But you'll notice here, a lot of this isn't. And if you want to come in through here, how the framework works, how the game loop works. Oh, oh, you're not marked as a whip. Bugger. Hey. Uh, but basically, you got good, solid documentation on quite a bit of it, how to bring in 3D models, things that works, how you set things up in terms of uh, the size of things. Um, you got some tutorials down here. I don't know how in-depth they are. So yeah, here's one on creating bots. Again, it does have AI uh, functionality built in, which is pretty cool. So there is really good documentation in this engine, which is one of those kind of a scarcities a lot of times when it comes to uh, open source projects for sure. So there is the um, RG3D book out there. I will link it down below because you're not going to want to remember that particular URL. Hopefully they do an updated one again with the new Firox branding. Um, Speaking of which, that is the new logo. I leave it up to you. Rage 3D, do you like the old name? Do you like the new name? Do you not give a damn either way? New logo, what do you think? Uh, again, rebranding something, it definitely adds some challenges. Even if you're just pissing off Google in terms of people finding you, that is always a bit of a negative. Uh, it does add some confusion and so on. Uh, but again, they're early on, even though as you can see, this is not a brand new project by any means. Uh, it's not so entrenched that this would be so much harder to do further down the road. So if you're going to rebrand, this is a good time to do so. But I'm curious to hear what you think of 
uh, the new name, the new logo. Also, what do you think of Rust game development in general? Also, stay tuned. There is some bevy news. I'm going to probably do it tomorrow so that we don't overdo the whole Rust news today. Uh, but stay tuned for that as well. Let me know what you think, and I shall talk to you all later. Goodbye.